Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. I just installed this new fixture and I'm going to show you how to install a dimmer light switch. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. Today we're going to be installing the Lutron dimmer switch and getting rid of the old on and off switch. Here's the light switch that I currently have in my kitchen. It's simply on and off and we're gonna give the cover a mirror finish. Here is the cover plate that I'll be using. It is made by Hampton Bay, and I think that mirror finish gives the kitchen a very elegant look. One thing I wanna point out is that when you turn the switch on and off, you're gonna get this kind of rough sound to it. In the other room, I do have the same dimmer switch that I'll be installing with the same cover plate. It looks really good. And I just want to point out how smooth it is turning it on and off. So when we turn it off, it's quiet and it nicely dims. I think it's extremely elegant. And of course you can adjust it however you'd like. And there's a major difference. I'm sure many might be wondering, are those actual wine bottles hanging from the ceiling? And the answer to that question is yes. Those are 18 glass wine bottles, partially filled, hanging from the ceiling. It was turned into a light fixture and it can hold three light bulbs. We're going to start today's project by removing the existing light switch from the wall. But before we do so, safety is always first. We're going to want to kill the power that is feeding the light switch. The power is going to come from the breaker panel. So I would recommend having a multimeter to check or double check voltage, but most homeowners don't carry this and I have an easy way out for you. So what we're going to do here is turn the light switch on and make sure that we have lights. Then we're going to take a walk over to our breaker panel, flip the switch that we believe is feeding the kitchen. It might be labeled, it might not. And if it does kill the power, then that's the one. Here's the breaker panel for my home and it's going to be this breaker right here. And apparently that kills the lights over here as well. So I had the light switch on in my kitchen. I walked over to the breaker panel, switched off the breaker that I believed was for the kitchen. And now my light switch is still on and I have no lights here. That means that it's a designated breaker and we can begin by safely starting this project. We can begin by taking off the cover plate and there are two flathead screws that you're going to take off to remove that. One here and one here. From here, the only thing holding this light switch together is two Allen screws. One here and one here. Let's begin by taking that off. Okay, the screws are out. Now we can see what's behind here. Got a little bit of tape around the switch. Now I'm just gonna take that off so I can show you exactly what's going on here. Okay, so we took off the tape and as you can see, we have two electrical points, one and two. We have a wire on one end and we have a wire on the other. It's just when you turn this power on or off, it's sending power from here to here or just breaking your connection so you don't send any power. So the idea is to basically kind of do the same thing for the new switch. So here is our Lutron dimmer switch. This wire here is just a ground. You would just connect this to metal, okay, to the casing of the electrical box. And then with this connections, we have actually have three, one, two and three and that is because this can be used as a regular light switch as well as a three-way switch we're going to be using it as just a basic light switch so this blue one it's not going to be in play we're just going to use the brass screw and the black screw so we're kind of just going to match it up with the existing switch and i'll show you how so let's just line up the new switch with the old one so basically these wires we're just going to match it up up here and this bottom wire we're going to match up down here. 
We're going to take a Phillips screwdriver and remove the old screw and wires. So I got the first wire on and just a quick note, this wasn't actually two wires. It's actually one wire that the last person stripped and they just made this little hook so it can go around the screw better. So it's just one wire on this side and one on the other. Alright, so I put one wire on one end and one on the other in the same fashion it was before. And what I did was just add some tape around here as these are super old wires. This place was built in about the 50s I believe and the insulation was really just kind of coming apart. So we insulated this with some electrical tape and then from there we're going to wrap some electrical tape around the switch and I'll show you how that's done. So basically the idea here is to just wrap up electrical tape just going all around so those three screws, those three conductors are not exposed. So I mean this is completely safe, the wires are in much better condition. And I mean, the original one didn't have a grounding screw, but I mean, it would be good to ground this. So basically, you would just like put this down to the metal casing somewhere inside here. And yeah, you might actually have a ground wire. And if so, you would just connect that wire together with this, use a wire knot and you're good from there. So as far as the ground wire, I kind of just put a screw into the metal behind here and just mounted it there and everything should be fine from here we're just going to push everything in and put our screws back we're going to begin by putting the screws through here which were the longer ones this kit does come with some screws so let's, let's get that partially in and then the other Awesome. From here, we're gonna just put in our new mirror finish. Whoa, that looks so nice. And just put our two screws in. This looks absolutely fantastic. And this mirror finish is so cool. Wow. That is amazing. So from here, we're gonna turn on the breaker and let's get some power to this kitchen. If you pay attention closely, you can see we have some green lights. So this is a digital dimmer switch. Looks really cool. I'm just gonna press it on. Whoa. Now that's a beautiful thing. All right, so here we have lights on full blast and I'm gonna adjust the light by dimming it. That looks so cool. It makes a big difference when you dim these lights. Huge difference, whoa. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you just press the button, either on or off. So right now we are on, and this is the highest setting. And this is how it looks like when you just press it and it turns off. Keep in mind, it's, it's a much quieter sound when you press the button. That is beautiful. And I want to turn it on. I'm going to show you how it turns on. Kind of just like a big burst of light. But it's great. So here's what it looks like on the opposite end. We are fully bright. I'm just going to click it. And it's a much more pleasant sound than the original switch. Now that is a beautiful thing. To manually adjust the switch, you have this little knob here where you can go up or down. This is down, this is up. One thing I must point out for this to properly work, you need to make sure you have dimmable light bulbs. That is really the key here. You need dimmable light bulbs and a dimmer switch. You need both for it to work properly. When you're able to dim a light, you can really change the setting in the room and the feel of the room. Honestly, when you dim the lights, especially with these wine bottles, you really give a different feel and a more romantic and elegant feel to the room. And if anybody found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you all next time.